started. Thank you. Good evening. We're going to call our meeting for Akron City Council to order. At this time, our clerk will read the roll. Baylor. Aye. Connor. Aye. Freeman. Here. Fusco. Aye. Collins. Aye. Kamer. Aye. Lombardo. Aye. McKittrick. Aye. Malik. Aye. Mosley. Aye. Neil. Here. Amobian. Aye. And Somerville. Aye. All members are present. Okay. At this time, we will be led in prayer by Father Dismas a visitation of Mary Parish. Immediately following our prayer, I'm going to ask if Councilwoman Baylor will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much. And I begin by taking this opportunity to thank you all for what you do for our city, uh, uniting us, bringing peace and working hard to make sure everything is going on well. Thank you. And thank you, Sharon Nikona, my Councilwoman Ward 10 for inviting me. So let's have a prayer together. <clears throat> God, our Father, thank you for the good leaders you have given to our city of Akron, leaders with discerning hearts and wise minds, always ready to do your will. Dear Lord, we come to you this evening asking you to brace their meeting together. Let your Holy Spirit guide them for a successful meeting. May they continue to lead this community in the right direction. Bless their efforts always and bless our community with your peace and unity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you so much. The minutes from our previously held meeting have been provided. Are there any additions or corrections? Motion to approve. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. All in favor, roll call. Baylor. Aye. Connor. Aye. Freeman. Aye. Fusco. Aye. Holland? Aye. Kamer? Aye. Lombardo? Aye. McKittrick? Aye. Malik? Aye. Mosley? Aye. Neil? Stay. Amobian? Aye. Somerville? Aye. The motion to approve the minutes passes 12 to 0 with one abstention. Before you, you have the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor, roll call. Baylor. Aye. Connor. Aye. Freeman. Aye. Fusco. Aye. Holland. Aye. Kamer. Aye. Lombardo. Aye. McKittrick. Aye. Malik? Aye. Mosley? Aye. Neil? Aye. Amobian? Aye. Somerville? Aye. The consent agenda passes 13 to 0. We do have two items that are up for public hearing this evening. Our clerk will read in item number one. Just going to let in some people that have signed up to speak from the waiting room. Thanks for your patience.
Notice is hereby given that the following open comment public hearing will be held by the Council of the City of Akron on Monday, April 24th, 2023, during the regular council meeting at 7 p.m. Ordinance authorizing a conditional use to establish a kennel at 640 East Catawba Avenue. Mr. Antonucci. Then members of council, uh, Laura Lawson is proposing to establish a kennel at this location. Petitioner has stated that the 10 foot by 28 foot or 280 square foot detached accessory structure located in the rear yard houses four kennel cages and is soundproof and insulated. Uh, while the kennel usually only holds four dogs, there is room for an additional pet carrier. The petitioner doing business as Safe Harbor for Strays also operates a Facebook page for the nonprofit Rubber City Rescue. The zoning staff had received a complaint about the kennel use and a letter was issued on January 30th of this year. A conditional use request was filed a week later. Petitioner stated that she has been rescuing animals from this location since 2017, but the need for animal rescue services skyrocketed, skyrocketed after the COVID-19 pandemic. The petitioner has provided rescue services for Akron and other countywide police departments, Ohio Highway Patrol, Akron Summit County Animal Wardens and the Humane Society. Providing small scale emergency kennel services provides beneficial services to local safety forces and humanitarian agencies. Since the kennel is located near a neighboring solid wooden fence running along West property line, it's partially screened from view. The deep property also borders to the south an unopened section of Lobby Avenue. As such, the planning staff is of the opinion that the property is suitable for a small indoor kennel. The indoor kennel is insulated and properly maintained. The Office of Integrated Development Planning Staff and Planning Commission recommend approval subject to conditions. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. So we're now gonna open up our public hearing and going to ask if we have anyone online with us that would like to speak, speak in favor or against this item, that you please turn on your cameras and unmute yourself so that you may be sworn in by our clerk. If you'd like to speak at this public hearing, can you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth? If so, please say, I do. I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we will start with our petitioner. Laura Lawson, are you on with us? Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay, thank you. How are you? Yes. Uh, our kennels are, like you said, on the, the side of the property alongside a stockade fence. You can barely see them from the road unless you look deeply down the driveway. Um, they are completely soundproof and insulated, so you can't hear anything, even if you're standing right next to them. You actually have to open the door to hear it. Uh, we don't always have four dogs maximum or five at that matter. Like right now, there's only two in there. And as of tomorrow, there'll only be one. And hopefully by the end of, the of that day, none. <laughs> That's what we shoot for every day is to make sure everybody goes home, goes to animal control or goes to the Humane Society, wherever it needs to be for that said animal. Um, I feel that if we do shut down these kennels, there is not going to be anywhere safe to harbor them. I mean, last year for the Akron Police Department, they did a research on how many calls we responded to and actually handled for them. And it was 381 calls and that's documented. My fear is if we shut these down, even for temporary, that's gonna be devastating to the, the area, not just Akron, but Summit County in general. Uh, like I, we said, we handle all these police departments and we do it with great pride. And we're hoping that the city can work with us in one way or another. I mean, it's we're asking for a conditional use of the, you know, the kennel permit. Um, lots of people in Akron have kennels. Lots of people say they're boarding animals. That's actually a kennel. But they call it different names. I'm just honest about it. And I'm not going to lie and I'm not going to hide it. And that's the only reason why I'm on the front burner because a one person complained and I've been doing this forever since 2017. Uh, and when COVID hit, it just got worse. We were on Fox eight news for doing exactly what we're doing. And if the pound would open their doors, like promised two years ago, we wouldn't be in the situation and it wouldn't be this bad. No other counties is bad. 
Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Lawson. And so we're going to continue with our public hearing and we're going to move through our list of individuals who have signed up to speak in favor of this ordinance. Okay. Is Wendy yes. Black on with us? Wendy, I think I see you, but it looks like you're muted. Are you able to unmute? I can send you a prompt that's going to show up on your screen. It's going to ask you to unmute. Did something show up on your screen? No? Okay, I'm going to try it again. Still nothing. Okay. Do you see a microphone somewhere on your screen? I think I found it. You found it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, I would just like to speak on Laura's behalf. And she has been doing tremendous work with rescuing animals. And I've called her several times. And I've even re uh, adopted an animal from her. Um, I live right up the street from her. And anytime I have an issue or a problem, I will get a hold of her. And she's all, she's for the animals. And I don't understand why that it's a problem to have a kennels to keep stray dogs or waiting for the owners to redeem in a safe place. And she, like I said, she lives by me and I've never heard a word or any barking or anything coming from her house. I don't even hear her dogs barking. And I just, I'm all in favor of her rescuing and doing what she does because she does it full time. And I'm, I, I'm just all for the kennels. Okay, thank you so much, Wendy. Is Amanda online with us? Yep, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, I also submitted an email, so I'll keep this brief, but I, I would hope that my email would be taken into consideration too because it outlines all of my concerns. Um, I have volunteered with Laura for years, um, both before I moved to the area and when I moved back. Um, I spent, I have fostered for Laura as well. I've been to Laura's house. And I, what I can say is that I've been to Laura's house, but I've not been back to see the kennels. And from her driveway, I can verify that you can't see the kennels. I've never seen them. Um, and Laura, to echo Wendy's statements, Laura is the only person that, or the only entity that you can call when there is a stray animal. Um, I belong to a network of volunteers that will go out if there's a stray dog posted on Facebook or that someone is missing their dog. I actually spent all day yesterday chasing a stray dog. And the only reason I can do that is because I know that if I get a hold of this animal, I have the support of Laura to find a good place for it to go. If it's injured, she can help me there. If it just needs safe harbor until it can go to the Humane Society or Animal Control, we can do that. Conversely, when you um, call animal control or you call the Humane Society, you likely will not get an answer and you will likely be turned away. So I encourage anyone here that has any doubts about Laura's, the value that Laura has, speak to any local law enforcement agency. They, they are the first ones to ask. I've worked directly with Summit County chasing more than one dog and they always ask where Laura is or if I'm affiliated with Laura. And I would encourage anyone that has any concerns to call 311, ask what to do if there is a stray dog and see how long it takes um, for Laura's name to come up because she is the resource in the area. So shutting down these kennels, not only for Laura's sake and for these dogs sake, I think it poses a huge public safety issue um, with stray dogs running around, but both for being hit by vehicles or vicious animals, Laura doesn't turn anyone down. She answers your call 24 hours a day and I am, in huge support of her being able to establish this kennel appropriately. Amanda, thank you. thank you so much, Amanda. Is Carla online with us? Good evening. Yes, I am. And thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. I do have volunteered with Laura. 
I'm going to try not to cry because I fostered for Laura um, and took in a 13-year-old Pomeranian that someone had called her that had been left in an abandoned home that the owner had died. And Jada was living with mice and fleas and had this survival spirit that with a mousetrap stuck to his nose, his paw, and his chest, um, he got out. And the neighbor at that house called Laura to take Shadow. And I saw Shadow's story and I thought, oh, I'm gone. If Laura asked me to foster Shadow and adopt him, I know I'm going to do it. And Shadow came into my home, had a great year and a half being spoiled rotten, and lived a good full life. I just recently adopted Dudley Doodle from the Hudson Police Department had called her Tom Git that he had been abandoned and Dudley has been with me since around Thanksgiving time fitting into my home. I have been to Laura's home. I have been in the kennels and the kennels are nicer than most homes that these animals have. When I have neighbors calling me because they know I volunteer with Laura to Carla, there's a dog walking down the street. What do we do? I'm able to get it. I can take it to Laura. I can take it to Jason to have it scanned for and reunite that dog with its humans. Um, I too have witnessed how many calls, not just Akron Police Department, but Hudson, Norton, Franklin Township, they rely on Laura. And I'm not sure what has really spurred someone to question her kennels, the validity of it, but I can testify that this woman gives her life to help animals in Summit County. And I'm thankful to be a part and to volunteer with her. Carla, thank you so much. Is Kathy Thank on you. line with us? You're welcome. Kathy? Tiffany Miller? Yeah. Jennifer Smith? I do see Jennifer. Jennifer, are you able to unmute your microphone? I can send you a prompt that's going to ask you to unmute. Okay, does that work? Yes, that, we okay. can hear you. Thanks. Okay, awesome. Thank you and good afternoon. Um, I too um, have known Laura probably about, I'm going to say, when I used to volunteer down at the Summit County Animal Control um, before COVID and before they shut it down where they don't really allow volunteers in no more without going through some ridiculous 30-hour training. Um, I met Laura there. Um, I have to say, I, I don't even understand what prompted this complaint to come. Laura is one of the very few people that run a rescue that you can actually say she generally has a rescue. She will come anytime, day or night. This woman has posted um, out like winter time, snowing, rain, setting up traps to, to trap these dogs that have been running for months. They're starving to death. Um, you know, I don't see any other rescues out there doing this. I don't see the animal control people doing this. Um, she, this is volunteer for her. This is not something that she gets paid to do. This is something that her heart generally enjoys doing. She is there for the animals. I don't know what our county would do without her. Um, she has helped so many animals. Um, I even reached out to her, I think it was like a year ago, um, to borrow a trap to trap a cat. And she stopped what she was doing. I went to her house, picked up this trap. Um, she didn't have to do that. Um, I, she will help anybody. She has helped hundreds of 
dogs find their way back home. She has given, you know, food to people that need to feed their, their animals. Um, I live in a neighborhood over here off of um, Carnegie. And for anybody to complain or even hearing the dogs bark, I have neighbor has dogs outside all the time, constantly barking. I mean, it's constantly barking, but that's what animals do. Um, you know, her kennels, I've seen her kennels. They're very clean. Um, the dogs are very well taken care of. Um, and she does what she can do the best to find these dogs, either get them back home to their family members. She scans them. You know, you can call and say, Laura, there's this dog. If you can catch a dog, she will come and scan that animal for you. When our own police department don't have time to do this, our own dog warden don't have time to do this. This is a huge problem we have in our area where, you know, our taxpayers' money is paying for these government people working for the county that can't take time to do, come out and scan a dog, pick up a dog. So you're supposed to just leave it, run loose and get hit. Now we're calling, hey, can you come pick up this dog that got hit and killed? When you call Laura, she will she will be up all hours of the night. She's going to get that dog to safety. She has to, you know, if she takes her, ho her house and puts it in a kennel, it's safe. It is safe until she can get it to Summit County Animal Control or, you know, to a safe place. Um, I think shutting her kennels down would be a huge, huge mistake. Um, she's not doing it for the money. She's not bothering anybody, you know. It's just someone that, I don't even know the person, but it's sad that you got people out there that want to do nothing but cause havoc on someone that generally are animals. And it's not the animal's fault. She loves what she does. And I couldn't imagine, who am I going to call the next time I see an animal? Just who am I going to call if she's shut down? I just think that, you know, she's a good-hearted woman. She loves what she does. We need her to stay open. Um, and the community needs her. Um, so I just, I hope that... Um, you know, we can just let her be and let her continue what she loves to do. And everybody, so many people depend on her. Um, I just, you know, I hope it's a, you know, just leave her stay open because we need her. Um, we do. She's a good hard person and she'd help anybody and any animal. So but thank you for letting me talk. Jennifer, thank you so much. Is Sharon Myers on with us? Sharon Myers, Jamie, Kim Martin. Here. Hello. Hi. Uh, I am in favor of Laura keeping these kennels open. Um, I am a moderator on a couple of the Akron Lost and Found Pet groups. And time and time again, I see that the warden will not come out and pick up a dog unless it's vicious. These dogs are, are roaming the streets, lost. She is the person to call. It, she always has been. The woman is phenomenal at going out and rescuing lost dogs, stolen dogs. Um, for years, she's been doing this out of the kindness of her heart. No, I do not know where she lives. I have not seen her kennels, but I can guarantee you her heart is 100% behind these animals. I think it's just totally ridiculous that Summit County does not have a warden who can come out and, and rescue these animals off the roads, but she can. I'm 100% for Laura on this. Kim, thank you so much. Thank you. Nicole, are you online with us? Just to clarify, did you say, is it Nicole Farrell? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, as a dog owner and an animal lover myself, I've seen firsthand the positive impact that Laura has on our community. When people have nowhere left to turn with their dogs, they go to Laura for help. That includes these law enforcement agencies locally. If you've not visited Laura's properly, I would like to note that it allows for safe, humane, and compassionate housing of canines, which is particularly important for the safety of the neighborhood as well as the well-being of canines and her care. 
The dogs who often find themselves at Laura's have no other options. Many are left without a home or proper shelter, many of whom roam the streets, facing dangers such as traffic, disease, and other hazards to both human and canine life. Additionally, I would like to note, as someone who lives very close to Laura, I've never heard any dog barking or any other nuisance noises. By taking in dogs in need, Laura is filling huge gaps in service that exist within our community as it pertains to animal welfare. I would like to quote an article I read in the Beacon Journal this morning on Summit County Animal Control. The vast majority of strays accepted at the facility are caught in Akron. The county's contract with the city allows it to reject animals when the center is at capacity. Akron does not currently operate an animal control facility. Without an open intake shelter in Akron, where does this community expect dogs to go? Rescuers like Laura step up to help the city on their own dime and are often vilified for their efforts. To add context, most animal shelters and rescues locally are on a managed intake system, where intake can be closed for days or weeks at a time. With few intake diversion policies, this increases our number of strays and otherwise at-risk canines that end up in the loving care of Laura. We need immediate investment from city officials in animal welfare and in local animal rescues like Rubber City Rescue. I wholeheartedly support Laura's kennel and know that if she is unable to do this work, hundreds of canines will either perish on, perish on the streets of Akron or become possible nuisance or dangerous animals. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Is Jackie Mills online with us? Jackie Mills. Okay, I do not see her. So I do believe those are all of the individuals who signed up to speak in favor. We did have, have one... Yes. I'm sorry. I think we do have another person. I'm working through a few screens here. I'm sorry. I'm for it. What's your name? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Jason Johnson. I didn't send an email because on the meeting earlier and I didn't think to send one in. Um, I obviously foster for her uh, rescue. Um, and I will tell you guys that her kennels are quieter and cleaner than my house. Like I can probably eat off a floor of her kennels. I can't walk through my house without getting dirt all over me, but I'm a four-year-old guy, but still, uh, I, I, I'm definitely in favor of her kennels because if not with her, then where are they going to end up? I, I can't take them. No way. And who else is going to step up to the plate and take these dogs? Nobody. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Sarah, do you see anyone else online with us? I do not see any of the other, other names that signed up in favor here with us. All right. Thank you. So now we're going to move to um, those who wish to speak against. We do have one individual who signed up. Uh, Linda, are you online with us? I do not see her. I, I do see her here. Looks like she's not unmuted yet. Oh, there she goes. There. We can now. Thank you. All right. Uh, my name is Linda Smoll. Uh, my property is at 656 East Catawba, which is on the corner of Hamill and Catawba, two houses down from uh, Laura Lawson. And uh, first of all, I'd like to commend all these people that spoke. They, they're a wonderful group of people. I don't know how they do it. Their heart is certainly in it. And I don't doubt that Laura's heart is, is in this. Um, I've known Laura for quite a few years as neighbors. Uh, and I have, I, I have to say, I don't think the opposition to the kennels is because of what she's doing. I think the opposition to the kennels is because of where she's doing it. Uh, the properties there have minimal frontage and they're deep lots, which means you have a big backyard and you have to find something to do with it. And, and this is what the Lawsons have done. Uh, my concern is for several other things that I had, had, had sent in. Uh, my first concern is she's been doing it since 1917 and never bothered to get the okay from anybody to do it. Uh, she's out on the streets accepting pets, uh, taking the, the liability onto herself. Uh, she should have investigated before she invested in 
doing the rescue work at that location. It's a neighborhood, there are children, it's always been a neighborhood. Um, hang on. Okay, the questions I have, first of all, who's responsible for the liability if one of the dogs should get out? If, if a dog gets out and gets into the neighborhood and bites someone, uh, who's, who is responsible? Who carries the insurance? Uh, I don't know if the city would cover her. I don't know if she has the liability insurance. I don't know how much she would have to carry. Uh, I know she would have to be licensed with the state to do this. I'm sure there are inspectors that come in and probably would find nothing wrong with the kennels from what I've heard on, on, on this broadcast. Uh, but I, I would be uh, interested to know that. Her husband is a, a, a long distance truck driver who uh, when he is home, he parks his cab and sometimes the uh, trailer in that same area. No, he doesn't do that anymore. Is the cab there now? And just and just if you can just give your remarks, okay? So I don't want you to have a conversation with the petitioner, okay? Just okay. Um, went by this afternoon. The cab's in there, uh, along with a couple cars that that she uses to pick up the animals because they have her advertising on. Uh, it's getting to be a little busy back there with cars and trucks and kennel and swimming pool. And I don't know how far she is from the neighbor's fence, if it's 10 feet. I don't know what the Akron stipulations are when you build a facility like that or a, an out, a out of house, not an outhouse, what do you call them? Um, when her kennel went up, I don't know if it's 10 feet away from her neighbor's fence to the west. Um, the liability I'm concerned with. Hang on. About her swimming pool. Uh, okay, the, the state stipulates a kennel has five dogs. From what I understand, Laura has four dogs of her own. Okay, she has four dogs of her own. So that means the kennel would, maybe not the kennel, but the property itself would have nine dogs on it maximum at any one time, five for the kennel, four for the personal. Doesn't make any difference to me, but that in and of itself, if things are getting bad, uh, you're gonna come to the point where you're gonna say, I'm full too, because of the, the stipulation the state puts on you, five dogs. So where does that leave you? You have to think about that kind of thing. Um, uh, the insurance, I understand the city is paying, the city has a grant and there is grant money being expended towards this service. Uh, I understand from the people that are talking, you are not, she is not being paid. This is totally volunteer. So I'm assuming the grant is helping to pay for the, the kennel itself, for the physical properties. No, food. Okay, so I'd like to know what, what the city grant is paying for. There's money being expended. I'd like to know where that's going. The other thing I'd like to know, if she is servicing other cities, possibly in other counties, is it fair to the people of Akron to be paying her to go into these other counties? You call the sheriff, he, he serves the entire Summit County. So he may go to Kent, which is in Portage County, and bring you a dog. Uh, the fairness of and the equity of, of the Akron grant being spent on other county or other uh, cities that are not within the Summit County border or without or not within Akron borders, that could be a problem for the city of Akron when they get audited. You know, where is where, why are you, why is a city have a grant that's going elsewhere? I also know from experience that grants are very specific. I tried to get a copy of the grant. Uh, I was told, I wasn't told anything. I never got a copy of the grant. I wanted to see what the specifics were on the grant that if they were violated, the grantor would pull the entire grant and you'd be left without any kind of financing. 
if it stipulates that you shall have purple cars on the road and you put a gray car on the road, you're violating the grant. I wanna see what the stipulations are and I would like to know who is going to monitor if, if the grant is being uh, properly adhered to. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, grants are, are given all the time. Uh, it's it's minutia basically, but it's important to you because if your financing is pulled, uh, you're, you're, you're gonna be an unhappy person. Um, okay, is the grant more than one year? Is it a long-term grant? Is it renewable? Does, does it automatically renew? Do you have to uh, apply for the grant every year? Uh, that means something because a lot of times money is not available to give these grants. And then that leaves your service floundering, trying to find other people who will submit a grant for you. And again, that will leave the animals and the people that depend on you out in the cold. So these are things that have to be considered. Come on. Computers are great until they don't do things. Come on. Uh, I'd also like to know what your relationship is rubber, to Rubber City Rescue. Um, are you also and also known as Rubber City Rescue or are you in accordance with Rubber City Rescue? Are you a, I don't know if subcontractor would be the proper word. Do you work with them? Do you work for them? Are you part of them? That would be a difference. Uh, in that case, there may be a way to combine Rubber City Rescue with what you do and avoid having this location in a neighborhood uh, that it's not suited for. Uh, I know it's a conditional use that you're requesting, not conditional zoning. So the conditional use would disappear if you were to ever leave as opposed to zoning the property for this kind of use. Uh, but in fact, if you are with Rubber City Rescue, there may be an alternative that they would have, they would have a facility somewhere that would not be within city limits, that would not be within uh, so close to expressways and other houses. Uh, it, it's just not a proper location for that. But I will say, I, when I have been over at the house, uh, I don't hear dogs. Uh, I don't hear anybody barking, not even humans. Um, and it is clean. There's just a lot on that piece of property close to the house. And uh, there's more and more coming along. Uh, how long is a dog held? From what I'm understanding, it could be a day or two, usually not more than a week before something happens that they're transferred to another location to be taken care of. So that's good uh, because I don't think your facility as it is set up can actually hold a dog longer than that period of time. Uh, so that I'm satisfied with. Um, and I guess, The, as I as I stated when I when I got on, the problem is not so much what is being done on the property. The proper the the concern is the location of the service on that particular piece of property in the neighborhood that it is in. Uh, the service that Laura provides, my goodness, all these people listed things that the, that the city should be providing. And nobody cares. Nobody has stepped forward to say, okay, we have a hole with the dog warden. We have a hole with the, the Humane Society. We've got to fill that hole so people like Laura can actually do a job. Uh, she's. It, it'll be difficult for her to remain an individual trying to beat the system. Uh, that's for sure. But uh, the city council and, and, and the people that are in charge have got to do something to assist her. She knows what's going on. 
And all these ladies and all these men that work with her respect her. They know she's a good lady. They know that she does her job. Let her do her job, but protect her also. You know, she may be putting herself at risk. And, and what happens? Nothing. She belongs to no one. She's just out there being a, a, a good Samaritan. So the city has someone that they can depend on to do a valuable service that she's already been doing it. People like her, uh, safety forces like her, they use her. Uh, there needs to be some conversation to facilitate this kind of service in the city of Akron. Uh, and I'm a, I've got dogs, uh, I've always had dogs and I know what they're all talking about. It breaks your heart when something happens and you can't do anything for them. So uh, I guess I am opposed, but I am not opposed. I am opposed because of where it's going. Uh, the houses are not, the houses are close together and uh, the kennel is a nice facility. And again, I said, I don't, I don't hear the dogs. I don't know how many dogs were there when I was there last week. Uh, but I did hear some dogs, but dogs bark. That's what they do. That's their, that's their job. Uh, but I don't think it's, it's uh, bothersome. I don't think it's, it's annoying anybody else. Uh, so what I'm asking is, can some time be given to Mrs. Lawson working with some of the people that could possibly help her to establish this service as a permanent service in the city of Akron. Set it up so that it's done properly, not that it's not being done properly now, but set it up so it is within the restraints. She is protected. She's protected from other people suing her. She is protected from safety forces saying, well, we worked with her, but this is what happened to the dog. We don't know where the dog went. She needs that. She, she at least deserves that from the city of Akron. Um, liability, I don't know how an individual would, would carry a liability policy on this, not sure. And there's all, you know, you always say the dogs don't get out until the dogs get out and then they're, then they're there. Um, but, you don't want that to happen. Uh, and I know in situations like this with public hearings, you don't get answers. You just you can just state your, your case. Um, I don't see it as a positive addition to the neighborhood, not because of what she does. I don't feel that that is the proper place for a kennel. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll just, I'll leave it at that. And uh, good luck to all you ladies and guys. Continue to do what you're doing. I'm glad you're out there. Uh, and I hope I never need you. So thank you very much. Ms. Linda, thank you so much. So at this time, we are going to close our public hearing. Councilman Fusco, what, what is the committee's pleasure? Uh, I recommend time. I'd like to pull the committee for time. Kamer? Aye. Connor? Aye. Mosley? Aye. Taylor? Aye. Request the committees for time. Time will be granted. And the next public hearing. Notice is hereby given that the following open comment public hearing will be held by the Council of the City of Akron on Monday, April 24th, 2023, during the regular council meeting at 7 p.m. Ordinance authorizing a conditional use to establish a dumpster business at 1029 West Waterloo Road. Mr. Antonucci. Yes, thank you, Madam President. Members of the Council, uh, Brian Gregory is uh, requesting permission to establish the commercial dumpster storage business at this location. Uh, the petitioner's business, known as Gregory Roloff Containers, is a part-time, family-owned and operated waste management company that provides dumpster rental and clean-out services to customers in Akron and northeastern Ohio. The dumpsters are primarily used for temporary storage of construction and demolition debris. The large property contains a single-family dwelling in which the petitioner resides. Uh, the rear of the property, which is paved with concrete, contains the business use where their one uh, semi-cab is parked. 
The remaining rear half of the property contains an area for the storage of dumpsters. Uh, the southern portion of the property contains a solid wooden fencing with a gated driveway. Kohler ditch runs along the western property line with the northern and portion uh, northern or and a portion of the eastern property line bordered by trees or lush vegetation. The property has a prior history of commercial use. In 1988, a previous owner was granted permission, conditional use, to establish a tree service business, and the property was developed as such. Petitioner stated that he typically only has from one to three dumpsters on the site overnight due to frequent rental activity. Planning staff recognizes the north and west sides of the property are bordered by unopened right of way, and there is industrially zoned land to the northwest and one block east, with solid fencing along the south portion of the property, uh, plus the vegetation and natural barriers around the property should ensure adequate screening uh, of any business activity from abutting properties. But any dumpster containing debris should be covered and stored on the property no longer than 48 hours. To mitigate noise, business activity should only occur between the hours of 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Further, there shall be no storage of chemicals or household waste, trash or rubbish, nor dumping of any debris into the Kohler ditch. If the petitioner complies with all of the conditions, the Office of Integrated Development Planning Staff and Planning Commission can recommend approval subject to these conditions. Thank you. Thank you. We're now gonna open up our public hearing um, if you are online with us and wish to speak in favor or against, just going to ask that you unmute yourself and turn on your camera so that you may be sworn in by our clerk. If you're here on this public hearing, could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth? If so, please say, I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're we're going to begin with those who are in favor. Is the petitioner Brian Gregory online with us? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Good. You can begin with your comments. Hi, I'm the owner, uh, Brian Gregory. Uh, I've just been saying, uh, it's just a small business trying up and start, you know what I mean? Uh, I work Vanderveer full time. I'm trying to get this up and going to uh, do this full time. Just get back to the community of Akron. You know what I mean? Start start a family owned business for uh, my niece, and nephew, my family, and just uh, get back to Akron. But the biggest thing is, uh, I thought that was originally because I've been told when I bought the house. Sorry, back in August, I thought that I was I could do it, but I guess I couldn't. Sorry, so I didn't know, but I thought I could. So been using it because. If all by industrial, pretty much like behind me. So, okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Gregory. Is that, is that all? Yeah, I just, I mean, you know, I mean, just want to start a small Bennett family owned, get back to the community Akron and give, okay. uh, for, do something for like my neighbor uh, festival, end up like food trucks, just get back. But yeah, sorry. Okay, no, thank you. You're so welcome. at this time, we're going to move to those who signed up to speak against. Do we have Chris Green online with us? Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Okay. Um, thanks for giving me an opportunity to talk. Um, my name is Chris Green. I live at 1014 West Waterloo Road, the property right across the street from the uh, 1029 West Waterloo Road location where the business is starting up. Um, my main concern can be summarized generally as me not wanting a junkyard located across the street. So the business operating there, Gregory Roll-Off Containers, provides short-term dumpster rentals. Um, they're, they're dumpsters, not storage. Um, people rent these dumpsters, fill them up with trash, then uh, you know, they go pick them up and bring the, come and dump the loads at uh, 1029 West Waterloo, where it then gets sorted into piles around the property. This is a typical junkyard operation. You know, we see everything from old mattresses to construction materials and the dumpsters being returned to the property. 
Uh, you know, this is visible from, you know, from the street where you see them going in to the, you know, pulling in. It should also be noted that, uh, you know, even they don't know everything that people are putting into these dumpsters until it's on their property. You know, any any of us could go online right now. They're advertised on their website for, uh, you know, cleaning out uh, houses if you're trying to flip a house or something like that. So people go in and they gut houses. They pull all the trash, all the mattresses, all the old uh crap out of the walls and they put them into these dumpsters and then they go and bring them back to the property and they sort them into different piles based on which type of trash they are. Um, so they don't even know what's in them until they get back to the property. Um, it's loud and, dust and dusty when they dump the trailers. The dust is potentially dangerous. But to return to my original point, I just don't want a junkyard next door. So, uh, you know, this is a residential area. Um, this is one of the nicer uh, areas along the Waterloo Road. So uh, I, I'd like to see the community more invest in a direction to improve the community here rather than transform it into uh, an industrial area. So um, yeah, so I, I'm opposed to uh, I'm opposed to any rezoning that would allow this uh, operation to continue in a junkyard capacity. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, in the uh, all industrial behind me comment, uh, you know, behind behind him is the, a, a big, big uh, bunch of open grassland or swamp land. There's no industry and you get to the highway. Uh, on the other side of the highway is another residential area. There's no industry behind it. There's industry down the road. And that would be great to see this move down the road. Um, but uh, here it's all re residential. Um, also, he, I think he said four dumpsters. Uh, by our count, there are like eight to 10 dumpsters over there. So it's not a storage operation. They're sorting trash into piles where it waits until it can be recycled. <laughs> that is the definition of a junkyard. <laughs> and that just returns. I, I, I wish them all the support in the world. And I hope they can uh, get their investment back on the property, but I don't want a junkyard next door. Thank you so much. Mr. Green, thank you. Nancy Carpenter. Yes, I'm here. My name is Nancy Carpenter and I live at 1023 West Waterloo Road, right next door to 1029 West Waterloo Road where they're storing these dumpsters supposedly. Uh, I don't think it's a good fit for our neighborhood. It is basically residential here. Uh, not only is it a blight on our community, but possibly a health hazard too because of the contents of these dumpsters being brought in. I wish them well somewhere else but I don't want them in my backyard. Would you? Thank you. Mrs. Carpenter, thank you so much. Mark Holman. Yes, good evening. Hello. Hello. Um, first of all, thank you. Um, I first wanna say, uh, I certainly don't know these people. I'm sure they're very nice people and this is not a personal issue at all. Um, Secondly, uh, I, I applaud them for being entrepreneurs and wanting to, to start a new business. Uh, I, I wish them all the success in the world. But that being said, um, as I think it's already been said, I, I would just as soon really see it somewhere else. Um, many of us, this area is, is a, a pretty well-established area. Many of us have lived here many years, some of us not. But at least in this area, we sit out a lot people that are across the street from me. I'm at 1006, so I'm kind of diagonal from 1029. Um, a lot of the neighbors here sit outside. And of an evening, my wife and I do quite a bit. And even, even on a weekend, I know they operate 24 seven, actually, they say so in their, in their advertisements. Um, it was a Sunday afternoon, evening, five, six o'clock. And I hear them pulling in and I hear them dropping a dumpster, makes a lot of noise, the air brakes going off, 
almost shakes the house when they drop these big heavy dumpsters back here on this concrete, which by the way, as, as Chris Green was saying, the area behind their property is wetlands. It is, um, it is a protected wetlands area. Uh, we currently have a problem with another issue going on back there where uh, a demolition company was dropping all of their um, construction materials when they were dem uh, demolishing or raising homes. And currently the EPA is involved with that. Um, again, if this business operated in a commercial area, I'd be all for it and just wish them the best. But this is a residential area, as others have said. We have children that walk by this area. Uh, it makes noise. They have trash. Um, they just go at every day at any given time. You know, it's just not stuff that we want. I want, my wife wants in this, in this area, in this neighborhood. Again, it's residential. It is not commercial. I will say when it was zoned commercial years in the past, it was a tree company. And again, that's fine. Their trucks came and went. Their trucks did not bring back trees and cut them up. They did not bring back trees and drop them off and leave them there. They drove away from 1029, went and did their business, came back to 1029. The next morning, they got up and went out and did business again. No business was actually held at that property as it is now. Um, so back when, even though it was listed as commercial, it really did not impact the neighborhood at all because they didn't do any actual work there. Work is being done here, makes noise, creates dirt, has trash, can draw, you know, rodents like rats and things, birds, all those things um, that we haven't had in the past. We certainly don't want now. So again, uh, I am against, I wish them all the best. Certainly nothing personal. They've, I'm sure they're very nice people, but we're just trying to protect our neighborhood here. And uh, it just doesn't have any business being here. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Holman. At this time, we're gonna close our public hearing. Councilman Fusco, what is the committee's pleasure? I'd like to pull a committee uh, to take time to refer this item, uh, Mr. Kamer. Aye. Uh, uh, Ms. Connor? Aye. Mosley? Aye. Taylor? Aye. Request the committees for time. Thanks. Time will be granted. That concludes our public hearings for this evening. We'll now continue with old business, budget and finance, Councilman Freeman. Many requests to continue to take time. Time will be granted. Planning and economic development, Councilman Fusco. Time on the agenda. Okay. Time will be granted. That concludes our old business. We'll now move into new legislation. Item number one is offered by Fusco. Ordinance approving the 2023 Consolidated Annual Action Plan, including applications and certifications for the Community Development Block Grant, the Home Investment Partnership, and Emergency Solutions Grant Programs authorizing the Director of Planning and Urban Development to enter into all necessary contracts for the operation and term of the programs and declaring an emergency. Councilman Fusco? Per. This item will be referred. Item number two is offered by Fusco. Ordinance authorizing a conditional use to vary the side yard area requirement to construct a garage at 70 East Dresden Avenue and declaring an emergency. Councilman Fusco? Per. This item will be referred. Item number three offered by Fusco. Ordinance amending or supplementing Title 15, Chapter 153, Zoning Code, Article 8, On-Premises Exterior Signs, and Article 11, Board of Zoning Appeals, regarding ground signs in residential areas and declaring an emergency. Councilman Fusco? Per. This item will also be referred. Item number four offered by Fusco. Ordinance authorizing the purchase of various interests in real property located on or around Riverside Drive to facilitate the Northside Interceptor Tunnel Project, authorizing the Director of Public Service or his designee to enter into related agreements and declaring an emergency. Councilman Fusco? Consent agenda. This item will be placed on the consent agenda. That does conclude our new legislation for this evening. We'll now move to the portion of our meeting that we refer to as our public comment period. 
Um, if our clerk would just let us know when everyone is in the room. Everyone from the waiting room is in the meeting now, Madam President. If you're here to provide public comment, can you please turn on your camera and raise your right hand? Like we have a few still connecting to audio. If you could please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth? If so, please say, I do. Do. Okay, thank you so much. We're gonna begin with uh, Fran Wilson. Hi, my name is Fran Wilson. I wanted to just pop in here and talk a little bit about what's been going on over the last week and a half. Um, the state failed to deliver justice for Jalen. Um, and now it'll be in the city's hands. Um, and I very much encourage anybody who has, um, a voice, um, to advocate, to fire and prosecute. Um, Jalen should not be dead. Uh, Jalen should be live today. Um, and we need to stop the, uh, corruptive nature of police investigating police. Last week on Wednesday night, um, peaceful protesters ward for neighbors, innocent bystanders, children, and reporters were tear gassed. Um, we really need to respect um, everyone's constitutional rights to assemble and to protest. And this city needs to take a hard look at its riot code, at its use of force policy internally with APD. Um, and, and we just need to start respecting protesters um, and, and their constitutional rights. Um, that's really it for me. Um, justice for Jalen Walker. Thank you. Thank you, Fran Wilson. Marissa Little. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome. Okay, so hello, my name is Marissa Little and I live at 1965 Auten Drive in Ward 4. Um, I'm here to request information to be shared with my council representative, Russ Neal, um, so he can communicate it to his constituents, my neighbors. There is a parcel and it's Parcel number 6862225. The address listed is 332 White Pond Drive, and it's located just south of Sickich. Um, in early March, there were rumors that the parcel was going to be sold to a company called Tamarios Painting um, for a company headquarters. And this is what why I'm here, a possible medical marijuana dispensary. Um, after I reached out to see if the rumors were true, Councilman Neal inquired about the vacant parcel with administration staff and could only confirm that unlike Triton residential development for a company headquarters and dispensary, there would not need to be a zoning change required. Oh man, maybe I need Laurel. Sorry, my dogs are barking. Um, which would speed up the approval process, which in my opinion and my most recent experience would leave neighbors out of the critical conversations for the future of um, vacant city of Akron land in our neighborhood. So I did some research and according to the county's property tax website in the GIS parcel viewer, <clears throat> it's still owned by the city of Akron, but recently the for sale sign has been removed close to the Triton development entrance right off of White Pond. I'm not even sure if the parcel is available for development by anyone other than the city or Triton. I'm just trying to find out more information. Um, so realizing that these may just be that rumors, um, the development of a dispensary or a headquarters, 
but also hearing a great deal of interest from this council body um, about early and proactive planning of city vacant spaces with the residents that would be impacted during the Triton development vote. Um, I'm asking all members of this council to help my, my neighbors understand what the administration has planned for 332 White Pond. Um, so if you know anything, if there's if there's a more formal way for me to request that information, I'm also open ears to that as well. Um, I'm just unsure of the process and I figured I would just ask you guys. Thank you. Marissa, thank you so much. And we'll make sure that we get um, some answers for your questions. Thank you. Okay. You're I welcome. Ben Gifford. Oh, hi, I'm here. Uh, my name is Ben Gifford and I live in Ward 4. Um, I would like to urge the City Council to expand Section 35.17 Item C of the City's Municipal Code uh, regarding prohibited public safety practices. This should be extended to also ban the use of tear gas, pepper spray, flashbangs, kettling, acoustic weaponry, rubber bullets, and body slams. Something I've spoken about several times in public comment is how punitive the city likes to be with its citizens. We see time and time again how the cops escalate situations. And last Wednesday, uh, that's exactly what the AP did when it deployed chemical weapons on peaceful protesters. Um, I also wanna be clear, we should not be arguing on cops' terms. They want us bickering over whether or not protesters threw water bottles before being tear gassed. Even if this happened, no amount of water bottle throwing at any time warrants such an escalatory, harmful and inhumane response. Might I remind you this escalatory mindset was on full display the night the cops killed Jalen Walker. When they chose to pull over a black man late at night, this was an escalation. It would have immediately put fear and panic into him. When they chased Jalen in a high speed pursuit for what could have been a mailed citation, this was an escalation. And they put large portions of the city in danger through both their pursuit and the firing of their weapons. Again, they try to argue on their terms here, whether or not Jalen Walker haphazardly fired a gun while driving, whether or not Jalen Walker grabbed for his waistband, whether or not Jalen was suicidal, when the real question should be, should the cops even have pursued him? What kinds of risks and danger did they create by doing so? And why are cops deputized to be ad hoc firing squads who don't face consequences for their action? To employ eight legally non-murderers because he's understaffed, but ask yourself, would you want to work for a company that's currently employing a firing squad? And then ask yourselves, who would apply to work for such an institution where you can both be shielded and publicly exonerated after slaying a black man? What kind of people do you think are drawn to that? In closing, Steve Milet should resign. Jalen's not murderers should also be fired and prosecuted and the municipal code should be amended to protect Akronites. Um, also, I just wanted to say, uh, while I like the in-person council meetings better, uh, Zoom has its upsides. I didn't have to take a bus or a cab or anything to get there. So it's not all bad. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gifford. Is Teresa online with us? Yes. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Ready. Um, I'm against the use of tear gas by force especially by our police. Um, I'm, I live in Ward 1 currently. Um, I often walk my dog around, um, and I believe Merriman Valley businesses should have more trash cans. Once again, main reason I'm here is uh, a citizen, Love Akron. I'm against the use of tear gas by our police. Thanks. Teresa, thank you so much for sharing. Jacqueline? I am here and I'm ready. My name is Jacqueline Blake. I am a, a citizen of Akron. I live in Ward 8, and I'm here to also speak on the recent events that occurred in Akron last week. I was unfortunately out of town. I was doing some caretaking for a family member in a nearby city, so I was unable to participate in any movements last week and was watching with horror in terms of how we have handled the situation with Jalen Walker. I didn't expect there to be charges for the police because I have not witnessed the city of Akron do the right thing when it comes to the situation. But I also didn't anticipate that we would completely 
lockdown meetings um, and that the police would start a riot when protesters were participating in their constitutional right to assemble. It's possible that protesters may have thrown water bottles. And based on the actions of the Akron PD, I don't trust what it is they say. And there's it's hard for us to find legitimate news sources that tell us what's happening because so much of the news sources that we have access to literally quote, police say, police say. And there's just a couple of pieces. I know I don't have much time, but your constituents have a right to assemble. Your constituents also have a right to due process. Jalen Walker was executed by Akron police, regardless of whether Jalen Walker was suicidal. He had a right to due process. I am also a human being who has attempted suicide. I would hope that if I were in the throes of a mental breakdown that I would have my right to due process. And it is disgusting to me that we are meeting on Zoom the week before the election. I understand there was a water main break and I do wanna give the committee the benefit of the doubt. At the same time, Y'all, the election is in one week and we're meeting via Zoom. If you are not willing to meet with us in person next week, it is very clear where your priorities lie. And I am sickened by how we have handled this entire thing. I understand that there's a process to the city council and it still took us over an hour to get the discussion that most people joined this meeting to be a part of. We spent an hour talking about animals and trash that is your priority. And again, I understand that there's process, but the process of the city council needs to be fixed. And if mayoral candidates sincerely wanna be voted for, they need to campaign on firing the officers who executed Jalen Walker. Thank you, Jacqueline. Is Reverend John Beatty online with us? Is Apostolette online with us? Okay. So at this time, that actually concludes our public comments for this evening. We'll now move into committee assignments, planning and economic development, Councilman Fusco. One o'clock. Parks and Rec, Councilman Lombardo. 1.45. Rules, Councilman Freeman. 2 p.m. Public Service, Councilwoman Mosley. 2 p.m. Public Safety, Councilman Kamer. 2.15. Health and Social Services, Councilwoman Amobian. 2.30. Public Utilities and Green Committee, Councilman Freeman. 2.45. Budget and Finance, Councilman Freeman. 3 p.m. Housing and Neighborhood Assistance, Councilman Fusco. 315. Is there anything else coming before council at this time? Councilman Malik. Thank you, Madam President. Um, just given Ms. Little's um, comment during public comment, um, I know Mr. Volman, I think is here on the Zoom. Would it be possible, Mr. Volman, for us to get an update at Planning uh, and Economic Development Committee next week about that parcel on White Pond? We will get a message to him and see if we can arrange that council. Uh, I'm here. I, I just, Are you here? I, there isn't really much of an any update to give at this point. Okay, but could we just get a Could we get some kind of presentation about what the plans for that parcel are? Mm -hmm. Let me look into it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Neal. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to thank the Ward 4 residents that came on to speak. Um, first, to my colleague that asked, um, I've asked those questions of Mr. Volman. If we could just get a confirmation if um, Tamara's Paintings owns the property, who still owns the property? I asked those questions when my constituents brought uh, the concern to me. I'm glad that they came on and uh, reinforced that concern. Um, that would be helpful, especially since uh, 
uh, they've expressed transparency um, mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, that area as well. Um, second, I want to, I noticed you called uh, Reverend Beatty and Apostolette. You know, this goes back to us talking about making our process equitable in all that we do. Um, there are many members in our community who like to participate uh, in city council that don't have access to this technology. Or if they have access, uh, if Reverend Beatty doesn't mind me speaking for him since we talked about this yesterday, they're not good at working this technology. We knew last time when we shut council down for a month, the hardship we put on our constituents. We should have an alternative way for them to participate. If we're going to be virtual, setting up areas where we work, I believe our live, all of our libraries are still open. Um, where we can have city members there, where members can have access to the computers there to be on Zoom. We need to be more sensitive to our constituents. And I'm hoping that we will go uh, uh, live next week. If not, then we should put those things in place so that members that want to participate have that, that ability to participate. Um, and then, you know, my, my concern is uh, after what happened last Wednesday, it was my hope that we as council would have gotten a brief, gotten a briefing on. Uh, I think we should have a motion to go in executive session for a conference with an attorney for city council concerning pending or imminent court action or to obtain legal advice. So moved. Second. All in favor, roll call. Baylor. Aye. Connor. Aye. Freeman. Aye. Fusco. Aye. Holland. Aye. Kamer. Aye. Cardo. Aye. McKittrick. Aye. Malik. Aye. Mosley. Aye. Neil. Aye. Amobian. Aye. Somerville. Aye. Okay, that motion to go into an executive session passes 13 to zero. I'm gonna put you into a breakout room. You're gonna see something pop up on your screen that's gonna ask you to join that breakout room. Thank you for your patience. This is gonna take just a moment. You'll go into that breakout room um, with the law department. And then when you're finished, you can leave that breakout room to come back into this regular session. Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Neal. Yeah, I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Fusco asking us to go into executive session because um, I do believe it's needed, but I wasn't finished with my comments and they were not going to go into, although they were going to mention, um, they weren't going to uh, compromise counsel in any kind of way. You know that. Okay. How do we know? I... So, so Councilman, are you trying to finish your comments now or can we go into uh, executive I, I session? I can finish them later. We could go on okay. and go into executive council. Okay. Thank you.
Councilwoman Mosley, did you get it? Looks like you did.
Okay. So at this time, I'm just going to ask for a motion for us to come out of executive session. So we come out of executive session. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, roll call. Baylor. Aye. Connor? Aye. Freeman? Aye. Busco? Aye. Holland? Aye. Kamer? Aye. Lombardo? Aye. McKittrick? Aye. Malik? Aye. Mosley? Aye. Neil? Aye. Amobian? Aye. Bell. Aye. The motion passes 13 to zero. You are back in regular session. Thank you so much. Before we call for an adjournment, I did see Councilman Kamer's hand. Do you still have comments? Thanks, Madam President. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, I just want to briefly uh, speak about um, the comments we heard today in regards to Laura Lawson. Um, many of us council members have worked with Laura in regards to uh, helping out our wards with uh, the dog issues. And um, I've known Laura and her whole family since I was probably five years old. And uh, the whole family has a huge heart of gold. Um, the, the reason I want to make sure council understands that what she's doing is so valuable to us as council members, because I'll be honest with you, if I'm wrong, you're more than welcome to correct me, but she is eliminating or decreasing the amount of phone calls that we are getting uh, from our constituents uh, in regards to these dogs that are uh, getting loose and that should be going to Summit County Animal Facility. Um, she's, she's doing a lot of volunteer work. Actually, um, you know, using her own personal life to be like a frontline worker, working with the police department. And, and we, don't, we don't hear much about that. We don't hear from the police department. We, we just continue doing our business as council members and we all work hard. And, um, and I'm sure that we could be getting flooded with phone calls in regards to uh, what's going on with, uh, if there wasn't a Laura Lawson. Uh, so moving forward, the, the reason I want to bring these comments up is uh, I know some of you council members have worked with Laura in regards to the rescuing of the uh, uh, pets in your wards. I know Councilman Fusco and I are working together to try to move forward with some solutions. Uh, but I am going to say that I think we as council can do better. Uh, also, Summit County uh, government can do better. Um, I believe we're in a situation that has a Band-Aid on it. And uh, if we really don't come together and think of a good solution, um, I think, I think uh, we're going to be hurting. So I don't know if that makes any sense. But uh, I just wanted to, you know, preach uh, the comments that were said today from some of her supporters and uh, all the hard work she does. She, she does awesome work. Uh, but there are some concerns that we as council should be really looking into. Um, but yeah, moving forward, uh, I think we can do better. The administration can do better and Summit County can do better. And I am calling out Summit County and asking them to step up and do better. And we all can just work together and hopefully find a good solution. Uh, but I support Laura hundred percent what she's doing but also um, she's taking a lot of risk. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman Kamer. Councilman Neal. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, just wanted to reiterate a couple of things before we went into executive session, asking that uh, we do get the information on White Pond, asking that uh, this body take time 
to reach out, especially since we're on Zoom, reach out to those, uh, our constituents that are protesting, to have a sit down with them. I mean, we represent them. Uh, we've never as a collective body sat down. I mean, we talk about the, about the administration, but uh, we have a role to play in this as well. Many of these uh, uh, protesters uh, have emailed us uh, possible legislative solutions to some of the things that that uh, uh, we're facing. I think it would be a good service for us to, as a collective body, form some uh, way to meet with our constituents that are leading these organized protests. Um, lastly, uh, a few weeks back, I asked for information on the legislation that was passed on the fire hydrants that were being painted. Um, that's never come forward. If we can find out why it was pulled, has it, is this a continuation of the million dollar fire hydrant pay, contract or is this a new contract? And if so, who has it been awarded to? If we can have that next week, that would be good. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Amobian. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, two things. In reference to Councilman Kamer's uh, comments about uh, the lady who is doing this awesome work, apparently, I, as I listened to the resident who spoke against, I couldn't figure out what she was. It sounds like she was speaking in favor more than she was speaking against. So I didn't even hear any real personal concerns that she had. So I, I don't have those concerns. I think she listed a number of the things that you're talking about that we need to look into the liability issue and so forth. So that I understand, but I couldn't understand why she was speaking against. Uh, secondly, I just wanna bring it to everyone's attention that Minority Behavioral Health is a mental health agency in Summit County. And I think most of you've heard about it. For the last week, they have had a number of healing circles at various churches and I've attended two of those. And I can tell you that our city is in a lot of pain and any of us who can attend these circles and listen to what people are saying and listen to the concerns that they have been expressing, um, I think will do us some good uh, because they see us as the leaders and they look to us for some direction. And I can tell you that uh, they were very uh, heartwarming and very concerning, uh, but people are speaking from their hearts, from their neighborhoods and from other citizens that they're representing. So I think it's important for us to participate if we can. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Mobian. Councilwoman Mosley. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, just briefly, I think it's important for each of us to reach out to a lot of these young people that are in our community. Um, and that is across the broad spectrum. Um, you know, I've, I've been talking to quite a few of them that live in a lot of, in most of our wards and um, they have a grave concern um, and they just really want somebody to just listen to them. And so maybe even inviting them maybe to some of our ward meetings and having mm -hmm. just an opportunity to speak with them. I know they've had open dialogues at all the Akron public schools um, with, with a lot of the students. Um, they had one where they had the kids come to the auditorium. They've had them at Ellet. They've had them at Hatton. They've had them at Betty Jane because these are schools my grandchildren go to. And, and the first question they're asking the kids is, how are you feeling? And I think that we, um, as the leaders in this community, we we need to do something to reach out to our children because the one thing we do not want them to, to believe is that all police are bad and that the police just want to arrest them. And that was a lot of the comments that came up with the kids in the elementary schools. And that really bothered me um, to hear that parents were telling me this is what their kids were saying. And, and, and these are kids across the broad spectrum, all colors, all, all nationalities, and we, and we need to debunk that. And so being able to have those conversations with those that live within our respective communities, I think it would do the city um, uh, a lot of good. Um, and then lastly, I, I wanna just piggyback off what um, Councilman Kamer said about Laura. Um, she has been very helpful to me in Ward 5. 
Um, I've had people who have lost dogs and, you know, I, I know I can inbox her and she's instantly looking to see if someone found that dog. Um, she helped me look for my mom's dog for a whole year. We never found him, but we she helped me look for him for a whole year and we couldn't find him. So and she would send me pictures and be like, is this Taz? And it would be Taz, but she would not let it go. And so because of her, her work, I think that there needs to be a safety net for her, absolutely, because I'm concerned about liability issues. So I think that there definitely needs to be a safety issue, um, a safety net created for her, because a lot of times the dog warden, they're stretched. I think there is a one or two of them and they're covering the whole county. So a lot of times people are leaning on her and she's not even the one being paid. And so I, that's something that we really need to think about. Um, she loves that community. She loves um she loves pets and that's okay too it's because of her one of my neighbors was able to find their dog down at the animal shelter because I didn't even know you can't even go into the facility she was the one and another lady at Mr. Kamer's meeting told me that they have a wall of pictures of dogs down and you have to go in if you see your dog because they won't let you in the back anymore I never even knew that till they told me and you have to write your dog's name on the picture and then come back the next day to retrieve your pet. And so she's just a wealth of, of, of knowledge and information as it relates um, to our, our, our furry pet family members. And I think we as a city need to figure out a way where we can make sure she's safeguarded in the work that she's doing. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Is there anything else coming before council at this time? Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. If there are no objections, meeting adjourned. This concludes the live broadcast of Akron City Council.